Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Julie and if you are with me for my last home renovation video, I did my entryway for your area, which is right over there. And at the end of the video, I asked y'all which rooms would you like to see me make over next? And it was pretty much unanimous. Everyone wanted to see the living room which was perfect because I had actually just ordered some living room furniture. So in today's video, we are going to be making over this living room, which currently kind of looks like somebody's first apartment. It is just a mishmash of items we had. We did upgrade from the lawn chairs because I thrifted these chairs that I want to put upstairs in the loft, but you know, right now we just needed something in the living room. I don't know if y'all remember, but months ago I thrifted this coffee table. I still love it, but it needs a makeover. I just kind of left it as is, so I need to deal with that. And I know y'all have been eyeing this beautiful entertainment center over here. <laughs> So I knew eventually that I wanted to do a built-in entertainment center here, but I did not have time to get to it. So I just went by some cabinets and we have some old crusty wood on top and we have the TV sitting on that. And it has been like that for about five months. So it is time to give this living room some attention and make it a nice cozy place for my family to hang out. The only thing I have done in this room is I've painted the walls, which took me six days. It was so much work. I mean, it wasn't just the walls. I had to paint the crown molding, the base molding, the walls, the doors, everything in here. And I also have purchased a rug. So those things are done. Oh, and also this cute little area is decorated. So that is exciting. But besides that, we have a ton of DIYs and work to do and exciting, we have some furniture coming in. So let's go ahead and get started and get to work on this space. It's going to be a massive transformation. This is the only furniture that we brought from Louisiana. I got these off of Facebook Marketplace for $150 about four years ago. They are real leather and we absolutely love them. They are gonna go in the boys' room. They practically have their own living room up there. So the plan is to put them up there. We just had them down here. So we had a place to sit until we got real furniture. And this definitely needs to get out of my living room. I also thrifted this for $10, y'all. This sells for $170 online. The kids have been playing with it, but they're kind of over it. I think I'm just gonna stick it in Ren's room for now. And once I get to her room remodel, I'll probably just resell it. Cause you know how they are. Excited about a new toy and then in not long, they are over it. Before we get started, I wanna take y'all back to what the house looked like when we moved in. This is coming from the breakfast nook area, which I recently renovated. If y'all haven't watched that video, go check it out. The walls were blue and I forgot to say, we also replaced the flooring and that has definitely made a huge difference. So new flooring and new paint colors, it definitely lightened up the space. And then this is the foyer that I was talking about. So there's lots of entryways into this living room. This foyer had an opening to a dining room that we closed off and we turned that into a bedroom. All right, guys, today is the day that we are getting furniture delivered. I probably should have ordered living room furniture a long time ago, but I really wanted this sectional from Ikea and it has been out of stock since we moved like so many other things. It has definitely been a struggle to find things that we needed for this house at this time. I'm sure lots of y'all have experienced this as well. So after months of waiting, I decided I just needed to go with plan B. So I ordered two sofas from Ikea. And I am so glad that I ordered them when I did because as I am editing this video and grabbing screenshots from Ikea, I am shocked that the prices have went up so much. I paid $3.99 for this sofa and right now the price on Ikea has gone up to $5.79. And that sectional that I really wanted was only around $800 and now the price is $1,170. 
it is crazy how quickly the prices are going up on everything i really wanted to get my furniture from ikea because i really wanted to try out their slip covers i think this is such a great thing to have when you have kids now previously picking out furniture i did always make sure that my cushions unzip so i could wash them but they were not made to be washed so after a few washes they would always start falling apart and the difference is is these ikea this, the Ikea furniture is made to be taken off and washed. So I have actually already washed them several times since I got them. You know, I have four kids, so <laughs> they are messy. Um, and they have really been great. I honestly do not understand why there are not more furniture options like this, especially since white and light furniture is so popular. Um, there was no other option but for me to go with lighter furniture. That's what I like. So this was just a perfect combination and I would highly, highly recommend these sofas. I really like them. I thought for a second about hiring somebody to come put these sofas together, but then I was like, girl, you can do this yourself and i'm glad i did it really was not difficult there was only a few pieces to put together only a few screws to put in it did not take me that long to put these two sofas together the slip covers did come with directions but when i saw that the first one was to iron the slip covers i was like oh no that is not happening so i put the slip covers on and i just put some wrinkle releaser on it and it was fine also if you have a steamer that would probably be amazing but you definitely do not need to iron them they are a nice thick material and like I said I have already washed them and I would say it's about as simple as taking the sheets off my bed washing them and putting that them back on it does not take long and it is not hard to do at all also, I want to point out that nothing in this video is sponsored. I am just giving you my honest review as a mother of four who really likes white furniture. But Ikea, if you do want to sponsor me, I love your stuff. My email is in the description. <laughs> and then, of course, I had to enjoy a cold beverage once the sofa was put together. But just one because I have an entire other sofa to put together. So it has been two months since I filmed the beginning part of this video. I thought I was going to get to this room, but you know, life happened and then I had Christmas DIY videos that I wanted to put out. So I just never got back to it. And this week is the week that I was planning on working on the living room and we are currently in quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> so me and my entire family is home and I was just gonna not put out a video and not worry about it but I was like you know what Julie life is just going to continue to happen and so maybe this isn't going to be a massive transformation and sometimes it's just like that sometimes you just pluck away at a project and it slowly gets done so that's what we're going to do on this video we're just going to pluck away at this project and I'm going to do what I can do with all these people home. So I'm just going to use the materials that I already have here to work on what I can and not put too much pressure on myself. We are just going to pluck away at this project because all these things need to get done anyway and I am not just a sit around and watch TV for 10 days kind of person. So we're just going to do what we can. I'm going to go into voiceover mode now because at any moment a kid's going to run through here screaming. Guarantee it. <laughs> I want to start on this coffee table first. When I saw it, I immediately loved it because it had this window pane detail on the side and it had this tray style top with a really pretty wood pattern on it. Now, if you watch my channel, you know that I do not enjoy painting furniture and I especially do not enjoy stripping furniture, but I just knew that this table would look so good if I could get the top, sand it down, and get it back to that natural wood color. The biggest issue was that stain that was on the top. In the end, I could not keep completely get rid of it, but I think I was able to hide it. It's really not noticeable anymore. It really didn't take as long as I thought it would to sand the top down. I started off with 80 grit sandpaper and got off most of it, and then I went down to 220 grit sandpaper just to smooth everything out. I am finished sanding and now you can really see the details in this wood and why I really want to try and save this top if I could. 
I want to put the mixture that I use on a lot of pieces is the Waverly Antiquing Wax that is watered down. Since I use it a lot on the projects on my house, I figured why not use it on the top of my furniture pieces. That way it kind of blends in and is cohesive with a lot of the other decor in my home. I did have to go much darker with the antiquing wax just to cover up that stain that was on the top. So I just continue to add more and more layers to the top until it got to the color that I wanted and until I was happy with it. I always think it's better to go lighter first because you can always add, it's just really hard to take away. I sealed this piece with Minwax Polyacrylic in a flat finish. I ended up putting three or four coats on here. I wanted to make sure it was very protected because Ren does spend a lot of time playing at this coffee table and I definitely do not want to have to go back and sand this table and refinish it ever again. <laughs> For the bottom of this coffee table, I want to try out this Country Chic All-in-One paint. It is in the color Crinoline, which is a very warm white. I think it is the perfect white. I love this color. I really wanted to try out this paint because it is a chalk paint, so there's no prep in work involved. All I did was wipe this piece down with a baby wipe, and that is it. But this paint also has a built-in sealer. So supposedly you do not have to seal the piece once it is painted. That is the main thing that I want to test out here because since we purchased this house, I have been painting a lot of furniture with chalk paint and I get it exactly the way that I want it to look and then I have to seal it. And then it ends up messing it up or it changes the way that it looked. So if I can paint this with chalk paint and get it the way I want it to look and then not to have to seal it that would be absolutely amazing so i figured this piece would be perfect it's in a high traffic area ren plays right here a lot so i'm gonna see how it holds up i was sent this paint by junk and disorderly girls and i'll have a link in the description below if y'all are interested but all i had was a sample and it was not enough to paint the entire coffee table so what i decided to do was just paint one side completely that way I could kind of see what it would look like. And once the other paint comes in, I'll paint the rest of it. And I am also going to just lightly distress the entire piece once it is done. This coffee table came out exactly like I wanted. I am so glad I took the time to sand down the top. And I do have it perfectly staged right now, but I'm sure Ren will have her Peppa Pigs on it very soon. At least I have these pretty pictures to look back on. And we're just gonna pretend like the other side doesn't exist while I'll wait for some more paint to come in. <laughs> So I just realized that I've never painted these double doors. So I'm going to do that right now, real quick. Well, probably be real quick for y'all, but not real quick for me. But I know that if I do not do it right now, it is not going to get done. So I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to get started on it. These are actually faux French doors and there's a hinge right in the middle and it is gold and to me it just sticks out too much. So I'm just going to take some white spray paint and paint it that way it blends in a little bit more. It's literally two days later y'all and I'm finally painting these doors. I really did not want to paint them. I have had enough of painting doors. They are very time consuming, especially when you have all this detail around the windows. But I know all these details are making such a difference in my house. So I am painting all my doors the same color as my trim moldings. It is Sherwin-Williams Greek Filla. I am also taking off all my doorknobs and painting them black. That way all the doorknobs in the house will have a cohesive look. All these little details really do make a difference and gives your house a more high-end look. 
Now we're gonna tackle the biggest job in the room. I am going to make my own custom built-in looking entertainment center. The first thing you need to do to make it look built in is pull off any moldings that are on the wall. That way your cabinetry can sit all the way against the wall. So I am just scoring all the caulk and then I'm going to pull the molding off the wall using a crowbar and you wanna put a piece of wood behind your crowbar. That way you do not damage your drywall. The cabinet that is going to be at the center of the entertainment center, like I said, I purchased five months ago from Home Depot. It, it is an unfinished cabinet. It is actually a sink base and it was $159. So first I'm going to make sure that this cabinet is centered on my wall. I was hoping to keep all the electrical out of here and into the other cabinet but it looks like this one is gonna to have to go in this cabinet. It's, if not, it's gonna be five inches off center. If it was just gonna be one or two, I was gonna leave it, but it's gonna be five inches off center if I don't put that electrical in this cabinet. So oh, I'm just gonna do that. I measured and marked where I needed to cut. That way we'd be able to access that internet panel. So I am just drilling a hole in each corner. That way I'll be able to fit my jigsaw through and can easily cut out a small square in the back of this cabinet. It's not hard to do, but like I said, I was hoping the internet and electrical outlet would fit into the smaller cabinet next to it. And since that electrical outlet is going to be in the smaller cabinet, I need to cut out a hole on the sides of both the smaller cabinet and the larger cabinet. That way I can run an electrical cord or a power strip from the outlet and move it into the bigger cabinet. That way we can plug in our TV, our internet, our Xbox, whatever we need, we will be able to plug into that larger cabinet. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm just measuring, drilling holes, and then I'm going to cut it with my jigsaw. This room is very large and I wanted the entertainment center to be bigger, but also to have some dimension. So I got two 24 inch wall cabinets from Home Depot. They were $89 a piece. And as you may notice, they are not the same height as the other cabinet. I am going to fix that by just adding some boxes to the bottom to lift it up. But what I really wanted was it to not be as deep as the middle cabinet. That way, like I said, it would just add some dimension to the space. If you have a smaller space, you could definitely do this with just wall cabinets. They are only 12 inches deep and I have actually done that several times before. It looks great, but like I said, this room was bigger and I just felt like it needed bigger cabinetry. So that is why I decided to make it this way even though I knew it was gonna be more work. It's not gonna happen in this video, but my plan is of course to put the TV on the larger middle cabinet and then above the two smaller cabinets, I'm gonna have floating shelves the same width as the cabinets and that's really going to make this look like an entertainment center and I'll have a place to put all my pretty decor. Check this out, y'all. My measuring skills were on point and all of my holes lined up perfectly. Now we have power in the larger cabinet. So do y'all remember the paneling that I put in the foyer? And I actually have it in several places in my house that y'all have not seen yet, but I wanna carry that over onto the entertainment center. That way it will feel like this entertainment center was truly custom built for this house. I got my four inch boards and I cut them down to size and I'm going to attach them to the sides of the entertainment center. They will not go all the way to the floor because I want to leave room for a base molding. So the plan for the bottom of this cabinet, because there's no way I'm going to be able to have time to get to it in this video, is to add a base molding. To do that, I am going to have to add more wood at the bottom so that the top of the cabinet and the bottom of the cabinet are even. And then I can carry that wall molding all the way around the cabinets. I'll insert pictures of what I'm talking about so y'all understand, but I think that is such a custom and built-in look when you have the same molding going from your wall all the way around your cabinets. 
Now to my least favorite part, the painting. I am going to be painting these cabinets, Sherwin-Williams Greek Villa in a semi-gloss. It is the same colors that I've been painting my moldings and my doors in the house. So once again, it will just be a very cohesive look with the rest of my home. Are y'all enjoying seeing my family pop in and out on this video? This is definitely real life. And that's why I decided to just go ahead with this video because not everybody is home alone all day like I am sometimes to work. Sometimes you, you know, have your family around and you just get what you can and done and every now and then you stop and you draw a picture and play with your kids and then you get back to work and you just kind of you know peck away at the project and eventually it will get done so if you're wondering why I didn't just buy something to put here, even if it was secondhand, this was kind of my thought process. I have mentioned it a few times already that we do not plan on staying in this house. So everything that I'm doing, I definitely want to add value to the home. And I looked at the prices of entertainment centers and media consoles and things that weren't permanent. And I just felt like I could build something that looked custom to the house that would add value to the house for less money than what I could buy a piece for. I also just personally love the look of a built-in entertainment center. Now I need to work on the top of this piece. Unfortunately, I could not find a piece of wood that was long enough. This cabinet is nine feet long and everything is eight feet long. So I decided on these project panels from Home Depot. The larger one was $36 and the longer skinnier one was $26. There's really no cheap options on wood right now, but I felt like this was a good deal for a top and I am going to cut it and piece it together. I'm gonna do a one inch overhang off the cabinets. So I am just measuring and marking my wood and then I'm going to go cut everything down on my table saw. I got all my pieces cut out. So now I'm gonna put them on the base and hopefully all my measurements were correct. Now let's go over what I have spent on this project. The cabinets at the bottom were $339. The top was $62 and I do have wood left over from that, a good bit of wood actually. The wood base that I used to lift up the wall cabinet was about $10 and let's say I used about $10 of paint and I still have to go buy some more base molding because I don't think I'm gonna have enough. So let's say $30 for that. So this cabinet is going to cost me $450. I don't know about y'all, but I think that is a great deal. And I do feel like this is going to add a lot of value to my home. I got all my pieces on and I am pretty happy with it. I mean, in a perfect world, I would have had a 10 foot long piece to work with. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue all my pieces together. I'm going to put wood filler in all of the cracks. I'm going to sand it down really good. And then I'm going to apply my stain and my top coat on it. And I think when I do all that, it will look like one cohesive piece. But I have to say, I am very happy with how it looks so far. I also need to cut a small little hole in the back so that the electrical can go down into the cabinet. So imagine this with a top the same color as a coffee table and floating shelves on each side over the smaller cabinets and then of course a TV in the middle. When I get this finished up, I will definitely post a picture on the YouTube community tab as well as my Facebook groups. I have linked to those in the description below. Now I want to hang some curtains that will definitely add so much coziness to this area. I'm going to be doing drop cloth curtains just like I did in the dining room. And if you want a step-by-step -step tutorial on that, I do have a video and I will leave it in the link in the description below. 
Unfortunately, this is another project that I am not going to be able to finish because I realized I was out of brackets to hang the curtains. I only had two left and I need probably five of them. So I'm just putting the two I have up and I'm going to hang up two curtain panels. But in the end, I do want four curtain panels. I just really want to see what this is going to look like. So I'm just going to use what I have and get started on this project. I got my drop cloths from Walmart and I always buy them at the same time that way I can make sure they all come in the same color because they do differ sometimes I am just obsessed with the neutral color palette I have going on I am just loving the way that everything is looking and coming together and I do plan on adding more color in with my decor I just haven't gotten to that step yet I'm gonna put a link to all my rugs in the description below they are all from Amazon but I love this ivory jute rug. I had ordered a smaller one for my foyer and I loved it so much that I ordered a bigger one for my living room. I was concerned since they were ivory, but I've had them for a few months now and they still look great. I also love my living room rug from Amazon. It's light, but it hides dirt very well. And I think my cat approves as well. I do have a large natural wood five foot by five foot window that I want to put over the sofa. And now that I kind of have the layout of my living room, I feel like I need a piece of furniture right here. I'm thinking like an antique um, wall or something like that. I don't know. I know it when I see it, but I'm feeling like a piece of furniture would definitely even out this space. Let's bring it back to the beginning one more time because I think that makes the reveal just much more dramatic. That is going to be it for this video. I fully realize that I did not complete a single project, but you know, that's how it is sometimes. I definitely completed more than I would have had I just sat on the couch. So I hope even though this space is not complete, y'all really did enjoy this video and it gave you some inspiration and motivation to just get a few things done when you can and eventually your whole space will come together. I think next week's video is gonna have to be a shopping or haul video because I cannot wait to get out of this house. <laughs> All right, guys, y'all have a wonderful day and I will see y'all in the next video.